Hello everyone. We will now look at a new concept in marketing which is known as green marketing. Now what exactly does green marketing mean? Now as far as, as, far as a definition is concerned, the definition of green marketing is the holistic management for identifying anticipating and satisfying the requirements of customers and society in a profitable and a sustainable way which basically means that you're supposed to identify anticipate and satisfy requirements of the customer which any other marketing campaign would do but the only twist here is that it has to be done in a manner which is profitable and sustainable which means that it has to generate money but at the same time it should not harm the environment or the society at large and should be done in a manner that the business and the environment can sustain for a long duration of time. So what are the requirements of green marketing? Firstly, a production process that is compatible with the environment, minimum emissions, uh, minimum pollution generation, all these kind of activities will lead to a much more greener way of producing a product. It should be compatible with the company's goals and it should satisfy customers' needs. So it has to take care of the environment, it has to take care of the company's goals and most importantly it has to take care of the customer's needs. Now the key to this entire thing is finding the right balance of these requirements. Now American Marketing Association has given a separate kind of a definition for green marketing. Now they have divided this green marketing into three uh, sections. So first is basically the retail definition which says that marketing of products that are presumed to be environmentally safe is known as green marketing as far as the retailing part of the business is concerned. As far as social marketing is concerned, what green marketing means is that the development and marketing of products designed to minimize negative effects on the physical environment or to improve its quality, which means that the development and promotions or marketing of products that can either reduce the harm on physical environment or improve the quality of the environment around it. So either ways this becomes a social marketing side to of green marketing. From the environmental perspective what green marketing basically means is that the efforts undertaken by an organization to produce, promote, package and reclaim products in a manner that is sensitive or responsive to ecological concerns. Now the most important thing in this definition is reclaiming products which means we are not just giving out those products for customers to dump it anywhere on the you know in, in his or her surroundings but we are actually reclaiming the product back to ourselves and reusing those products for our benefits. Now these are the different types of definitions that we can come across from green marketing and from these from these definitions we can fairly make an idea that green marketing is not just about producing an eco-friendly product but it is also about producing marketing uh, packaging as well as getting those products back from the environment improving the you know uh, the the quality of the environment around us at the same time reducing any probable impact to the environment through these uh, products and services now another thing that we need to understand about green marketing is that a it is an emerging uh, strategy as far as green marketing is concerned and it incro incorporates a broad range of activities like product modification so that it suits the environmental needs fair trade practices so that the number of uh, you know supply chain intermediaries are reduced which increases the transportation costs which again increases the carbon footprint of that particular company uh, adopting eco-friendly production processes wherein minimum emissions are given out in the entire production process and the raw materials which are used are more or less organic in nature uh, modified advertising, usage of non-polluting advertising uh, uh, techniques packaging of the product in such a manner that it does not affect the ecology disposal of those products do not create trouble for the ecology around us so these are some activities that needs to be taken care of as far as green marketing is concerned. In simple terms what it refers to is the process of selling products and services based on their environmental benefits. Which means that any product or service which is environmentally beneficial falls under green marketing. Now such a product may be environmentally friendly in itself or produced or packaged in this way. So maybe that product may not be environmentally friendly or may not directly impact on improving the environmental conditions but the way it is produced and packaged creates minimum impact to the environment and ecology around us. So this is, the, this is basically the idea of green marketing in this entire concept.
Now, why are we so gung ho about green marketing? Why is everyone running behind green marketing these days? Firstly, there is a growing concern across the globe that the environment is slowly and steadily failing. And the major reason for us is us humans. And because of this environmental protection concern that is growing around the world, companies are coming under pressure to produce more and more eco-friendly products. And consumers, on the other hand, are also becoming more and more conscious that their consumption is impacting the environment. They are now aware of the fact that whatever they consume directly or indirectly affects the environment around them and affects the ecology around them, which makes them more and more conscious about what they actually want to have. Manufacturers have also recognized environmental concern as a competitive advantage. Now, because of this growing concern across the globe and because of the consumers becoming more and more aware, manufacturers have now realized that this is the next big thing and this is how they can actually stand apart from competition and derive an advantage in front of the competition by creating more and more eco-friendly products. And marketing in itself is also a part of this entire problem. Now, why is marketing a problem in this entire thing? We will look at marketing's impact on the environment. Firstly, what does marketing do? It stimulates overconsumption, which contributes to environmental degradation. Very clearly, if we are uh, you know, promoting a product which is packaged in pet bottles or plastic covers, and if we are promoting it in a very efficient manner, what happens? There is overconsumption. People are running behind the product. And what happens to those packagings? What happens to those, those, those uh, you know, raw materials with which it is made? It gets overutilized and results in environmental degradation. A very simple example is of paper. Today, all of us are trying to get as much as paperless as possible in our work lives and personal lives. But even today, the requirement of paper across the globe is so high that it is resulting in massive deforestation across the, country, across the planet. Now that is a very good example of how overconsumption is actually stimulating environmental degradation. Another impact that marketing has is that it replaces more environmental friendly goods to increase profit margins. Now not all environmental friendly goods are high on profits. So marketing campaigns generally promote those products which are more on profit margins without actually con being concerned about the environmental or ecological impact that these products will have on the on the on the society and the environment at large now unnecessary packaging also contributes to environmental degradation now sometimes just to make the product a little more attractive or just to ensure that the product does not break during transportation we add multiple layers of packaging or we create packaging in a manner which becomes more and more attractive to the consumers now because of these practices all those packaging materials will go out in the form of waste and disposals which will result in economic degradation or sorry environmental degradation long supply chains like i said before long supply chains actually increase the carbon footprints for every every product and the company because the more the number of uh, intermediaries in a supply chain the more the transportation cost the more the carbon emission footprint is that you will leave on this planet so these are some of the impacts that marketing has had on environment and this is precisely the reason why green marketing is necessary so that whatever we as marketeers have done to the environment can be undone. There are certain characteristics of green products. Firstly, these products are originally grown. They are more organic in nature and not artificial. Secondly, they are recyclable, reusable and biodegradable. They do not leave behind a trail of waste which will remain in the soil for a long time. They are degradable and they just mix into the natural environment once once they are disposed thirdly they are made from natural ingredients obviously since they are organic in nature and and less of uh, artificial more and more natural ingredients are involved in it and it also contains recycled contents and non toxic chemicals these products also contain approved chemicals so even if they are in, you know involved uh, in you know chemicals are involved in their manufacturing process they are all approved chemicals as far as international standards are concerned these products also do not harm or pollute the environment in any manner. They are not tested on animals. Like many cosmetics uh, that are coming out in the market today, green products do not get tested on animals. They believe in the fact that animals do not need to be used as lab rats for testing various chemicals before it comes out on the human beings. Now, products that are green are also eco-friendly in terms of their packaging. That is, they are use, reusable and refillable, uh, you know, uh, they are coming in refillable containers. 
there are various challenges that we come across when it comes to green marketing. Firstly, is that there is a need for standardization. When it comes to green marketing or green products, we do not have a standardized way of saying whether this particular product is green or not. It is still, there is still a lot of standardization in terms of processes and products that are required in the world today. Second thing is it is a new concept for the customers. So something that is, uh, you know, that is something new, it is very difficult for consumers to accept and understand on why this particular product is premium priced because it is organic or because it is a green product. They, they would still want to go back to the original product which is at a much much lower price and much more convenient for usage. Thirdly, companies require a lot of patience and perseverance when it comes to promoting green products. Green marketing does not yield results right in the first go unlike major marketing campaigns today. It takes some time to grow on the consumers, it takes some time for the sales figures to reach a particular level. Lastly, one of the major challenges is avoiding the green myopia. Myopia is basically you know, what we call short-sightedness. People do not see what is there in the long term. And many companies have faced this green myopia where they do not see the impact of following the green methodology in terms of marketing and production, you know, on hand, the kind of impact that they will have if they do not follow these processes on their sustainability as a company and on the impact that they create on the environment. Now, that was the challenges. Now, we'll look at some of the benefits of green marketing. Firstly, it ensures sustained and long-term growth along with profitability. Though it takes some time for the profits to start kicking in, but once it comes in, there is a steady inflow and the business remains more or less sustainable for a longer duration of time. It also saves money in the long run. Initially, the cost may be more, but as and when the demand start increasing, economies of scale kicks in and thus prices can be reduced further but it all depends on the initial demand that is generated. Thirdly, it helps, in, helps companies to market their products and services, keeping the environmental aspects in mind. So these are some of the benefits of green marketing. Let us look at some of the golden rules in green marketing. Firstly, know your customer. We should know exactly whom we are marketing to. We should educate these customers and make them understand why it is important for you as a company and for them as a customer to adopt more and more green marketing and green products uh, in, their, in their lifestyles. Thirdly, as a company, as a brand, you need to be genuine and transparent. You need to tell them why your product is eco-friendly, why it is green. You should reassure the buyer that any product, any process that you follow in, the, in your company or any raw material that is used in manufacturing of the product or the packaging that you do does not adversely impact the environment and you need to reassure the buyer that it does not in any way compromise on the quality of the product that comes their way. You need to also consider your pricing. Understand one thing, making a green product is not easy. It is at times a very costly affair because it is very easy for us to, synth to, uh, to procure synthetic items and use it in our product but it is very difficult to do, do the same thing and still maintain the quality with organic materials because it is more or less degradable. Now in this case, pricing generally tends to go up and that is something that we cannot afford to when it comes to satisfying our consumers needs. Last but not the least, consumers expectation should always be the top priority. Now we may have all our green marketing strategies and, and goals for our companies but if it does not meet the consumer's expectations there is no product that will be taken off the shelf and there will be no business and there will be no sustainability for your company. Let us look at some of the case studies, some, some practical examples where green marketing has actually helped a lot of brands. First of the examples is State Bank of India. Now, State Bank of India has actually used, started using eco and power friendly equipments in close to 10,000 new ATMs that they have you know, opened up across the country. SBI has not only saved on power costs and on carbon credits, but is also set to, you know, right, you know, set to uh, you know, put in a right example for others to follow. There are several banks which are actually trying to follow suit for SBI. And since SBI has a network of ATMs which also penetrates the rural areas, wherein electrical connectivity is a major problem, such eco-friendly and power-friendly equipments that they use for their ATMs ensures that their ATMs remain present and active in several of these rural areas. SBI has also become the first Indian bank to harness wind energy through a 15 megawatt wind farm which was developed for them by Suzlon Energy. 
Tata Sons on the other hand is now on their two wings of Tata Motors and the Indian Hotels Company are trying to create more or less of a green impact on their on their entire marketing and uh, production campaign. Uh, firstly, Tata Motors is trying to set up an eco-friendly showroom in several areas. So basically, the natural uh, the building materials, the flooring, and the lightings that they use for these kind of showrooms are more or less coming from natural materials. So that is one one aspect of Tata Motors. On the other hand, the Indian Hotels Company, which basically runs the Taj Group, are now in the process of creating something that we call eco rooms. Now, why are they called eco rooms? It is because they are more or less energy efficient. So, what do these rooms concern? Con, you know, consist some of the uh, aspects that this room will showcase is one. Uh, firstly, they will have an energy efficient mini bar. They will have an organic bed linen. The organ the linen on the bed will be actually made from recycled paper. and the illumination in the entire room will be either through cfl or leds thereby reducing the uh, consumption of electricity and reducing their impact on the environment suzlon energy on the other hand uh, it is i mean most of us may know that suzlon is one of the most energy efficient companies in the world and it is the world's fourth largest wind turbine maker and the, and probably one of the most greenest and the best indian companies in india Uh, Tulsi Tanti, the visionary who is behind Suzlon, uh, convinced the world that you know wind is the energy of the future, and built his factory in Pondicherry entirely powered by wind energy. Suzlon's corporate building in India is one of the most energy efficient buildings ever, and that gives them a much bigger brand goodwill, and mention, and awareness, or rather, much more brand uh, connect towards various consumers. Kansai Nerolak on the other hand has always been committed to welfare of the society they have undertaken a lot of activities and right now Kansai Nerolak is now working on trying to remove hazardous heavy metals from their paints now most of us may not know but there are there is a heavy metal lead which is contained in uh, paints which is especially dangerous for a lot of a uh, lot of us in fact it, it is extremely dangerous for human health where it can actually cause damage to the central nervous system kidney and, and the reproductive systems so children are basically more and more prone to these kind of lead poisoning uh, and it results in lower intelligence levels and memory loss for these children and kansai neurolag is making every effort in their r&d section to try and develop more and more paints removing these heavy metals from the paint formulations wipro infotech is india's first company to launch an environment friendly computer in fact all the computer peripherals that they have made for this particular uh, you know wip uh, computer is completely made of environment friendly products and for the indian market wipro has actually launched a new range of desktops and laptops which are called wipro greenware now these products are rohs compliant which is basically restriction of hazardous substances which reduces the e waste that is generated in the environment we'll now look at something called eco labeling now eco labels are basically logos and you know symbols that are given to various products which helps us identify that this particular product is environmental friendly or eco friendly now eco labels actually carry a guarantee you know they they are a, they are a gu- guarantee that a given product or service is fit for use and will have reduced or no environmental impact throughout its life cycle so whenever you use the product you will not be harming the environment that is the kind of guarantee that eco labeling gives us a few examples of eco labeling are mentioned on this slide you can actually see them which basically tells us that uh, you know across the world there are several products which carry these eco labels and are actually communicated as green products triple bottom line is one of the uh, you know most uh, important aspects of green marketing or sustainable marketing as we call it so triple bottom line stems from the concept of sustainable marketing sustainable marketing is nothing but a process of creating communicating and delivering value to customers and companies in such a manner that both natural and human capital are preserved or enhanced what it basically means is that the entire process of marketing which is basically creating communicating and delivering value to customers and in that manner also to the companies is done so that minimum impact or a minimum negative impact is created on the natural and human wealth of the company as well as it is preserved and enhanced in a much better manner so they not only uh, reduce the impact of envir- on environmental factors but they also improve the quality of environmental factors so what are these triple bottom lines uh, generally the bottom line that we call for any uh, the, that we call a bottom line is basically the pro- profit for any company 
But when it comes to triple bottom line, there are three sustainability bottom lines that every company needs to follow. ITC has a triple bottom line policy. And according to this, there are three, three uh, you know, targets that every company has to fulfill. One is the environmental sustainability, second is societal sustainability, and the third is economic sustainability. Environmental sustainability is basically ongoing preservation of the existing essential ecosystems and their functions. So we have a society, we have an ecosystem around us, we are actually trying to preserve them, we are actually trying to improvise their conditions and we are basically trying to operate in an essential ecosystem which functions in a better manner and which is, which is going to be there with us for a sustainable long period of time. Social sustainability on the other hand is the ongoing ability of communities to provide for welfare of their members. So companies basically try to do a lot of community work in the society where they are existing and they try to add more value to the members of the society and give them a better standard of living. On the other hand, economic sustainability deals with ongoing ability of an economic system to provide for all human needs. So we are not just having a social stand or an environmental stand, but we are also trying to make as much money as possible so that we can put in all that money back for the society and ensure that the human capital or, and all the human needs are completely fulfilled and the human capital actually grows. So this is, this is basically the concept of sustainable marketing where these three points are basically known as the triple bottom line for any company. Now sustainable marketing concept, it expands marketing from a you know, concept by making the need for sustainability much more explicit. So sustainable marketing does not say that I will only do marketing campaigns which are eco-friendly. It takes the entire concept of marketing out of that normal gamut of more and more sales to more and more impact on the society. And sustainable marketing is still based on creating a competitive advantage through superior performance and meeting consumer needs. Which means just because we are doing sustainable marketing, it does not mean that we stop earning profits and we stop taking care of our consumers. So it has to take care of all these aspects. Social, political and environmental changes make sustainability a way to achieve a competitive advantage in terms of other companies and other, other brands in the market. Now, how is sustainability a competitive advantage? Firstly, there are several benefits of integrating sustainability in your marketing strategy. First is, it allows the company to realize cost savings. Now, once you enter into a much more sustainable way of dealing with uh, marketing campaigns, you realize that there are several avenues in which you can actually save costs. Second, it reduces company's exposure to regulatory and resource-based risks. So sometimes just being aggressive in our marketing campaigns without taking care of the sustainability factor, we run a risk of you know, being non-compliant to several regulatory uh, aspects. So that is somehow you know, reduced in terms of sustainability marketing. Third is it spurs innovation to stay ahead of competition. Because we are restricted by several regulations and market conditions and our triple bottom line policies, any company who is following this particular uh, sustainability program has to rely heavily on innovations of various manners to ensure that it stays ahead of the competition. And it can reduce conflicts with retailers and business partners. Obviously, if you have a sustainable business model and if you show the benefits of the sustainable business model to your various channel partners, they will also understand the benefit of being in associated with a company which is going to survive for a long period of time in the market. It can improve the company's reputation and positioning because we are taking care of the society, because we are taking care of so many different aspects around our environment. The goodwill that is generated, the reputation that is generated for the company will be much, much higher. Also, it improves a company's chances to re recruit talented employees. If the company's brand is good, all talents would definitely want to be associated with this particular brand. Sustainable marketing also improves a company's chance for long-term survival. Now we will look at a concept called greenwashing. Now greenwashing was basically delivered, de derived from the term of whitewashing. Whitewashing is what we call how people, you know, just uh, uh, make fool of others by showing this, or showing a particular product or service or a situation as something entirely different. Now greenwashing is basically disinformation which is disseminated by an organization so as to present an environmentally responsible public image which means they are actually not environmentally responsible but they are trying to portray that they are environmentally responsible by spreading false information. It is a misleading act and it could actually result in customer and regulatory complacency which means you can actually face flack 
for cheating your consumers and the regulators can also be behind your backs for providing misleading information into the market. We will look at a few examples of greenwashing. First example is that of General Motors. General Motors sometime back came out with uh, ads for their SUV brands wherein they showed, their, they falsely promoted it as environment friendly. They showed all their SUV brands in green habitats in such a manner that it communicated to the consumers that their SUV is as pure and as natural as the surrounding trees. This was basically a misleading information because they had done absolutely nothing to reduce the impact that their SUVs will have on the environment. It also, General Motors also promoted saying that, uh, you know, they, they came out with an ad campaign saying that they have now produced or uh, rather they have now set up a manufacturing unit which is more greener compared to their earlier manufacturing and they will be rolling out a particular uh, SUV which is more environmental friendly. But when it actually happened, they had only produced 2000 or 3000 of those green SUVs and the remaining Ford uh, motor vehicles were actually being used in this. And this entire exercise put uh, you know, General Motors in very bad light and promoted their product as, as a very, very misleading kind of a brand, which generated a lot of false, uh, which generated a lot of negative, good, negative uh, brand awareness for them. Uh, another example is that of Dawn, which is nothing but a, a, a liquid soap. And Dawn sometime back came out with an ad campaign to save, uh, you know, harps, uh, harp seal, uh, in basically trying to rescue animals after an oil spill. And Dawn said that, you know, they will donate, donate uh, soaps to clean anim animals for after oil spill and gives, give, will give money to the rescue groups which are trying to rescue those animals. But what they did not say was that their, their antibacterial uh, soap actually contained an agent called triclosan, which was, which was actually toxic for the aquatic life. So what they were trying to say that they are a green product and they will be giving out these pro this, this soap for cleaning aquatic animals would have actually resulted in more deaths. So that also you know, resulted in Dawn facing a lot of flack from the consumers and regulators for, misleading, for providing misleading information. Now, how do you market sustainability? Firstly, you don't sacrifice immediate satisfaction for long-term benefits. Just because you have to be sustainable does not mean you will sacrifice your immediate satisfaction, that is your immediate profits. You will have to take care of them. Secondly, you will have to have products which are beneficial on the long term. You will have to develop them in a much better manner. They will not be successful immediately because of their low, uh, low appeal. But over the period of time, they will gain importance and consumers will understand why they need to have this particular product. Then you should not focus on the absence of negatives, but on green plus design or green plus technology or a better design products. You cannot have a product which is absolutely positive or which does not have a single negative aspect. It is impossible to develop such a product. So rather than focusing on removing all negatives from your product, which would, have, which would actually make your product an impossible thing or which will increase the cost of your product, you should actually focus on how do you design products in a green manner, how do you pr produce them in a greener way and how do you design them so that it, it comes out in a much more sustainable aspect. It, you need to also create desirable products that combine immediate satisfaction with long term benefits. So we are looking at products which are not only you know, sat providing us with satisfaction on an immediate basis but it is also being going to be with us for a long term. Products which are packaged with ocean recycled plastics. So you can actually have products which are packaged with ocean recycled plastics which tells us that they will give us whatever we need immediately but at the same time they will be with us for a long term because we feel the emotional connect towards these products because they have actually done something for the environment. Communication on the other hand, you can focus on community building and changing people's minds. But like you know, having events of collecting plastics and removing pollutants from the environment, having a cleanliness drive that like we had for Swachh Bharat Abhyan. All these kind of community activities can also help in improving your brand communication in a much better, better manner. Uh, Non-sustainable markets. Now, when we are actually looking at the entire conclusion, you know, entire aspect of green marketing and sustainability marketing, we can very clearly conclude that non-sustainable marketing hurts a company's relationship with the customers and its long-term survivals. So, if you are only looking at profits and and your margins, you will actually end up alienating your customers and hurting your businesses and you know, ent ensuring that it bleeds and does not survive for a long term. 
secondly changing the value systems and empowering the consumers will continue to increase importance of sustainable marketing which is actually going on right now across the globe and it is a very good message it is a very important message to indian companies also to adopt these sustainable marketing programs and adopt these green marketing programs because india also has been facing a lot of environmental impacts lately and we have also been dubbed as one of the most polluted countries in the world so it is a high time and it is a, it is an alarming message to all our companies to follow green marketing strategies and sustainable marketing strategies now how do they respond to it is up to them but we as marketers can at least put this idea again and again in their minds and ensure that india remains and becomes one of the most sustainable environments for businesses now another uh, thing that we can do is we can combine short term satisfaction with long term benefits that, that is what we have to do we cannot have a situation where we are only looking at long term benefits i am only looking at sustainability and i don't care about the profits that is that cannot be done we just we cannot be environmentally responsible without have, having any any money to support this cause marketing can be a part of the solution you can actually contribute to sustainable marketing as an empowered consumer and an enlightened marketer or an entrepreneur so you need to be empowered as a consumer and you need to be enlightened as an entrepreneur and understand the concept of green marketing and sustainability marketing and take it further as an evangelist for this particular topic and make it happen in in your environment in your in, in your business uh, arena